In this day and age, you need to have powerful AI tools to enable you to code more productively and more efficiently. And with that, I want to help introduce Crush, the glamorous AI coding agent for your favorite terminal made by Charm. And if Charm sounds familiar, it's because you've probably used some of their open source Go projects before. And I've talked about them on this channel, such as Bubble Tea, Lip Gloss style definitions for nice terminal layouts, and Gum, just to name a few. And this time they released Crush in the modern era of AI agents and AI tooling. It seems fitting that Charmin create a tool that's also open source made entirely in the Go programming language that enables people to develop with AI coding agents right from their terminal. And it's great. I mean, the README looks beautiful. Multimodal, choose from a wide range of LMs or at your own via OpenAI or Anthropic compatible APIs. Flexible, switch LMs mid-session while preserving context. That's pretty cool. Session-based, so maintain multiple work sessions and context per project. Crush, use LSP for additional context, just like you do. They're extensible with uh, MCPs and works everywhere. First class support in every terminal on Mac OS, Linux, Windows, PowerShell, and WSL. FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD. Now, before we go any further in this video, I want to mention that this video is in fact sponsored by Charm. Now, you may be thinking, oh great, it's gonna be a biased video, I'm only gonna say nice things, but that's not the case at all. You see, I approach Charm and we want to collaborate for a little bit as someone who's made videos about their products before and someone who's used their products. This was a great way for me to actually give my authentic first reaction to their brand new tool that they spent a lot of time on. So in this video, I'm gonna give my raw thoughts, explore for the first time, and give you guys the pros and cons of the Crush CLI tool. So in this video, I wanna showcase two main features of Crush. The first one is how can it one shot an entire project from scratch for me? And the second one is how can it add a new feature to an existing project I already have? But before we go into that, I wanna show you the kind of out of box features that Crush the CLI tool offers. And if you press control P, you get this kind of command menu, this really nice modal uh, menu here, which gives you a few options of creating a new session, switching between your sessions, switching between models, enabling thinking mode, uh, toggling YOLO mode, help, or even initializing a project. Um, so we'll start with the sessions. Every time you run the crush command, it kind of creates a new session for you. And a session is kind of a context window of all your previous prompts and in that kind of workflow that you've had with the LLM. So for example, I can switch between sessions. You can see here, I have one that's for ready code assistance and the other one is a documentation development guideline one and these were pretty much tapped into the previous context i had with the lm and i can begin from that session or i can just continue in my existing new one next i can also switch between models so right now i'm using an anthropic cloud opus 4.1 model i can switch between any of these pretty easily here so there you go i've switched my model i'm gonna go make sure i switch back to 4.1 uh, but i if i want i can also go switch model and go to an open ai model so like gpt5 which is the newest open ai model i can click it and it's going to ask me for an api key which i can put in and i can be using the open ai models which i think is a pretty nice way to just seamlessly switch between different models very easily okay now in this part i made a new directory and i ran crush and it's asking me would i like to initialize this project and if i do it will examine the project and put the result into a crush.md file so every time i open Open up crush again it can quickly read that md file for general context to refresh itself on the session so i'm gonna go ahead and click yep this is an empty directory so there should be nothing for it to kind of go about but you can see you can see the nice design all the things that crush is doing i love the ui i'm going to give it permissions to do what it wants examine everything it should be fairly quick because it's an empty directory all right, so it created me a very simple crush.md file. So if I go open this up, NeoVim, you can see I just have this crush.md and it gives me a bunch of different instructions for a empty Go project. And one thing I really like is on the right hand side here, you can kind of see a status bar of everything that's happening in your crush session. So you can see the crush logos right here. You can see the directory that you're in. So new CLI tool is the brand new one I just made. The model I'm using, thinking's off, the context window, the number of tokens, the cost for the session, and all of the modified files, as well as if I have any LSPs connected or even MCPs connected to the project. Okay, and I'm just gonna give it a simple prompt. I want you to create a CLI Go Pomodoro tool that allows me to study and take breaks. All right, so I'm gonna give it this prompt. I'm gonna see what Crush can, can do to create this project for me in basically one shot. 
Wow, it's even creating tests for me. You can see in main underscore test.go, test Pomodoro timer. Okay, cool. I will say that Crush is just very visually appealing. I mean, oh, I have to run Go Mod Tidy. Okay, go ahead. I mean, all the colors just pop. The blue, the different shading, the Crush logo, now purple. It all looks very nice. It's running tests for me now. Whoa. Yeah, so at the bottom line, this is a very visually appealing uh code CLI agent, probably the best looking one. I mean, I can even open up uh, Claude code and you can see here I'll go, uh, yes, proceed. And this is just Claude code. This is kind of what it does. It's not really too much visually appealing things going on, but obviously with uh, charm, you're gonna be dealing with a different set of specialized skills. All right, so it looks like it's done cooking. Perfect creative, fully functional CLI, Pomodoro timer and go with the following features. Key features, it shows me all the files it created, the usage, um, wow, the tool is built, tested and ready to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. So that took 18.4 thousand tokens. So we go back here, uh, you can see all the different files, okay. All right, it looks uh, fairly promising. I, ha I won't go into all the details, but let's go follow, let's just follow its instructions. So if we do Pomodoro start, what happens? Okay, uh, work 25 minutes, break five minute long, break 15 minutes, sessions four, and it started. Okay, so session one out of four, time to focus. And uh, you can see my timer starts, that's pretty cool. Okay, can I, uh, how do I stop? All right, and what if I do the start help command? You can see here, so start Pomodoro session. So with the flags, you can break, help, long, long break, duration of minutes, session, number of sessions before long break. Wow, so this very bare bone does exactly what I wanted it to do. There you go. I just got my Pomodoro session and I'm curious to see what happens at the end of it. So I'm going to keep this running as explore the different features here. Okay, so now for the second feature on explore is how we can do an existing code base. So here I'm going to go into this app I built called yapper.chat. It's just an anonymous room that you can send an anonymous message and it gets deleted with all these rooms. They also get deleted. So if I go back into crush, you can see now I am in the yapper code uh, repository, link will be in the description down below. It's gonna ask me to, you know, initialize a project. And here, it's gonna be actually looking at all the different files I already have in place. Okay, so you can see it's going through now the TypeScript re React code style, so that's for the front end. So it went through all the back end, you can see here, it looked at the Go code style in the server directory. Here's some files it looked at, the common uh, error handling patterns, naming conventions, common patterns used, that's awesome. And now it seems to be doing the exact same thing, but for the front end, because I have a front end component and the back end component here too. Okay, so you can see here, I have the local version of Yapper open. And here, what I wanna do is when I send a message, hi, this is a test, you can see there is no timestamp associated. So no one knows when this message was sent or how long the last message was in a chat box. So what I wanna ask Crush is if it can implement that feature for me. All right, so there's my prompt. I wanna add a feature. When a user sends a message, I don't wanna see the timestamp of when that message was sent. There you go, the, everything seems to be done. So if I go back here, and there it is. Wow, it actually finished it. The time step when the message was, that's pretty cool. So let me, okay, wait, this is another message. You can see here, yep, it does in fact persist it. Let me see if I go back here, where are the messages? Was it this one, this one? Yep, there they are, okay. Let me see if I log out and go into another incognito mode. You can see it did it in one shot. That was pretty impressive. That was, uh, that's pretty cool. I like it for, uh, that makes it pretty easy for me to, to make different features. So that was, that was very pleasant. That's, a, that's awesome. Okay. So I know I said I won't be biased, but I have to admit, this is actually a pretty good tool. This, it did some very basic tasks for me, like going through and making a Pomodoro CLI application or even adding a timestamp field to my messages, but it did it very quickly. It did it very seamlessly. And I think the most important part about these agentic CLI tools is it allows you to do work and focus on something else. So for example, once I give the prompt to crush, it just took it care of it. And I was able to do whatever I want on the other side with the confidence now that knowing it will complete the task as expected, which I think is really that kind of sweet spot you're looking for agentic tools. To, does it have your confidence that whatever it does, whatever it's doing, however long it takes, it will do it properly. 
All right, guys, so I really want to say I'm very impressed with Crush. It kind of blew it out of the water. I didn't think I would like it this much. I really want to give it my raw opinion. I mean, as you guys saw, I'm very much so a Claude user. I use Claude all the time. It's kind of what I'm used to. But Crush really just brings a lot of different color life and a feel of being kind of buttery and smooth to my agentic AI CLI experience. It is bar none the best looking CLI app for agentic workflow. That's, I have to say the colors, the pattern, it just looks so beautiful. The menu is pretty crisp, it's to the point. The only things I will say that are cons are that sometimes on initial project spin up or initialization, it does take a bit of time to create that crush.md file. And nowadays with the cursor files, crush.md files, claude.md files, there's a lot of these different files that have to add into your git ignore, which is a bit of a nit. And then secondly, I will say that the menu options feel just a little limited. It's not really a big deal. You can switch between the models, you can switch between your sessions and thinking mode, which is great. And that's probably all we need to do. But I do, I would like to see some other features moving forward with Crush, but I want to kind of cut some slack because I'm not even in a first major version release. All right, guys, so with all of that being said, I have to admit, I really like Crush. I think it's a great tool. I think it's another great strong player in this world of like CLI agentic applications that are just popping off right now. I think it looks the most beautiful. It feels so smooth, not clunky. And I'm just, I love it. I, I'm very impressed with it. I wanna give a big shout out to Charm for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna try it out, link will be in the description down below. Make sure you give it a start. It's open source. So if you see a thing that you wanna make better or improve on it, you can contribute and you know, add your flair to the project and help it out. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what video you want to see me do next time. Thank you guys for your support. If you haven't already, click subscribe. It means a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.